Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. So tonight we're back working on the race truck as usual. Um, I've actually spent the last couple nights looking over the engine, Whoa. looking over the engine, which I have kind of wrapped up because I was doing a little bit of grinding and we will be getting into some welding and grinding tonight. So I figured I'd cover that up, keep any dirt off of it from getting in it, all that kind of stuff. But I've been kind of messing with uh, some belt routing, some computer mounting, just looking at kind of the peripheral stuff going on the engine, um, just so we can get that thing sunk in this truck as soon as possible. So tonight we are going to be moving forward on our safety stuff. Um, as you guys know, in one of the previous episodes, we got our Kirky seat mounted. So we're gonna go even further with that and get our five point harness mounted in the truck. So a five point harness is two shoulder straps, uh, lap belt, and then uh, this anti-submarine belt, they call it, otherwise known as a crotch strap, which um, really is just there to keep the lap belt in place. So for our race truck, I decided we were gonna go with race quip. So I got a five point harness from race quip. I believe this is a 16.1. Uh, there's all the numbers. It's a cam lock harness, which we'll go into in a second. I think it's a 16.1 is the SFI spec. So here's all of our SFI specs. I have looked through this already, um, trying to figure out our whole mounting system. We got our race quip stickers, of course. We got our two shoulder harnesses. Ooh. And we have our lap belt and our anti-submarine belt. So these belts are actually certified for two years. Um, so they have to either be sent back to race quip and be recertified every two years, or they need to be replaced. So the R's are good until December of 2021. We should get two racing seasons out of it and whatever passes we're able to make at the track this year. But as you can see, it's an SFI 16-1 cert. Our uh, shoulder straps are three inches wide, and I decided to go with the cam lock mechanism. Basically, um, there's two different styles of this, and offhand, I can't remember what the other latch system is called, but the cam lock seemed far superior. The other latch system, you have to actually uh, latch, you have to latch it in a certain order, kind of going around. I believe it's like a shoulder belt, lap belt, anti-submarine belt, the other lap belt, and then the other shoulder strap, something like that. This is much simpler. Basically, there is a slot for each of our belts. Um, once we get them in place in the truck, you just, ah, hard to do with one hand. Um, but basically, you just kind of plug it in like a normal seat belt, if I can get it. So it just clips in like that, everything's good. When you need to exit the vehicle, you just turn it a quarter turn and you're free. So it's just a very basic design, it's easy to use. Um, from what I read, basically the advantage of this is it's just simple, the, uh, but the disadvantage is dirt and whatnot. So if you're doing some sort of off-road or desert racing, the cam lock is not the uh, recommended or best thing for it because it can get dirt in there. But for all our purposes, this is gonna be what we use. Also, for mounting the things such as our shoulder, shoulder straps, we have two options. We can either bolt them, put tabs in and bolt them, or we can wrap them around the bars in the truck. So, as far as mounting this, the anti-submarine belt needs to be kind of coming up here like an angle like this, um, which we really don't have a provision for. So I made a bar for us to put, let's see here, that we can put he down here and we'll have it turned, turned like that. And we can put a, a bolting point on that so our strap will come up. I made it extra long so we can weld it, put our tab on, have our anti-submarine belt here. Um, as for the sides, we're gonna do something with the bolting I think that we actually used for the seat to mount that. And then for our shoulder straps, as you can see, I actually have a bar already in place. For our shoulder straps, it needs to be between level with our shoulders to below four inches below it. So this current location right here should put it about one inch below my shoulders. My shoulders fall about here in the seat. So we should be good there and we'll have to get that all welded in. That'll be secure. We can get all our belts on. Um, 
Of course, we're gonna just kind of get all of our mounting for our belts figured out, get the belts mounted in the truck, just check everything out, make sure it's good. And then I'll probably pull that, um, the Kirky seat cover we'll probably put in just so we see how everything fits. But I'll pull everything back out and then when the truck is complete, we'll put that all in for like a final installation. Um, just that way, if we have any more cutting, welding, grinding, we're not getting that stuff on all our safety equipment because that just wouldn't be good. Um, but also, you know, kind of keep it nice, keep it fresh. And we're also gonna have to remove the seat one more time after that so we can paint all of our bare metal, um, like our tabs for our seat mounting and whatnot. So anyway, guys, it's kind of the plan for the night is to at least try and get our five-point harness in. If we get further than that, great. But if, hopefully we get that done and we'll call tonight a success. Well guys, welcome to a couple days later. So we started our five point harness install the other night. Um, had a couple issues, a couple setbacks and other things that we didn't think about beforehand. Anyway, we're here today um, to kind of wrap everything up, get the seat in, get the five point harness in, all that kind of stuff. But first, what were our issues? So our first issue was actually with this uh, submarine strap mount. So as you can see, I have this welded tab which came from that Speedway Motors kit. Um, I tacked that, that whole assembly up, cut the uh, tube down, all that kind of good stuff, brought it over here, set it on the ground, put my ground strap on it, started the weld. I got about a quarter, half inch in, and it just all kind of went to shit. So I could not figure out what was going on. So I'm, what, what am I doing wrong? Check my my lines or my my uh, my cables, all that stuff. Check my gauges. Made sure I had pressure on the gauge, all that. Made sure I wasn't out of gas. Check the machine settings. I just couldn't figure it out. So it took me. I don't even know how long actually, but it took me a while until I realized what was happening is I would weld the first quarter to a half inch. The cooling fan for the welder would turn on and it was blowing all that air down here and that was enough to blow our shielding gas away. So once we kind of figured that out, I took that bracket, I actually made a, a new tube and got another little bracket, put them here on the engine stand. Then I was able to weld everything and everything just worked right. Um, so we had that little issue with the fan which is not a big deal but it took me a while to figure out it's one of those moments when you go why didn't i think of that you know it's one of those silly things you don't even think about so anyway the other hold up with the whole mounting of all this was once i got this bar welded in for our five point harness straps it was hot as you can imagine everything was hot really i can't put those in when they're hot so we had to wait for everything to cool off um, with my work schedule and whatnot, um, 
I didn't have enough time to really film or do any of that. Just kind of come home, go to bed. So I threw a, a coat of paint on it. I did have enough time to do that because, well, spray paint takes like two seconds. So we spray painted that, put a little color on them. So now we're here. Today we will finish this install. We'll get our Kirky seat mounted. We'll get our five point harness installed. Um, it'll all probably end up coming back out. We'll see what the work is on the truck, but at least we know we got these safety items done. All right, first time getting in here, trying to harness on, got the helmet on. Um, this is just a snowmobile helmet. I don't even know if it's rated for what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna have to look into that. Anyhow, let's see how this whole thing straps up. Wow. Wow is all I can say. Uh, I knew it would be secure, but this is kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's like pulling you into the seat, which, I mean, that's the point. It's just, wow, this is impressive. I, uh, and this cam lock is awesome. Alright guys, so there's our full seat set up, safety wise. Uh, it looks phenomenal. Uh, the, the thing works great. I just sat in it. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't know, well I shouldn't say surprisingly. Uh, I didn't know what these tabs were for. So surprisingly, I figured it out. So you hold up on one of these and then you can pull down this strap thus tighten your harness because when you sit in here and the harness is set to where you were before you just can't get that that buckle into the cam lock of the lap belt here it just it just doesn't work so you got to loosen it up and then tighten it and that's what this little tab's for i didn't know that until i sat in there but yeah um the quality of the race quip product seems good i say seems good the only reason I say it seems good is because a lot of stuff seems good until you have to use it. This is one product that we'll, we will be using every time we go down this track, but we hope we never have to actually see if it works, if that makes any sense. So anyhow, we got a race quick harness in, we got our anti-submarine belt here, we got our lap belts, we got our shoulder belts, everything is fantastic. So. The lap belts are just bolted to our bolts down here for our seat. Uh, basically, I got a, I think it's an inch and a half bolt. I use the shoulder here and put another nut on the side. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. So there's the nut on the inside right there at the end of the threads. So I ran that all tight and then put another nut on the inside of the seat. So so basically we have a threaded portion with a nut on either side and then we have the bolt shoulder and that's where our harness you know our lap belt is so that will allow it to pivot whatever we need it to do our anti-submarine belt is of course mounted to the bottom here on this tab we put in and it's it's just perfect um i'm very happy with how that all turned out now for the shoulder straps Rather than bolting those all in, we went to the bar that we just installed back here. Um, everything's good. You know, we have room between our mount or between the bar and the seat and our little buckle. Now, the one thing they stress in the instructions, and I believe these are the SFI instructions, um, wrapping this correctly. You have to go through it like two times and then like 
a half a time. So basically, if you can see both of these steel buckles, like down here, if you can see that up here, you don't have your belts fully wrapped correctly. So you want it, this is basically what locks everything in. Covering this other, you know, top bar on the buckle, that's what locks everything down, makes it secure, so no matter what happens, you cannot pull that strap through. So we're mounted to the bar back here. It should, you know, be able to kind of align with my shoulders. Everything's looking good. It's it's phenomenal. I'm I'm so happy how this turned out. So you guys saw me climb in there with the helmet. Everything fits. Everything works. It's perfect um, as far as the belts go. Now we do have adjustments to make because race clip gives you all this extra belt, which as you can imagine makes sense. What if you're mounting down here or you're mounting wherever? This, you know, this harness setup is not necessarily made for any particular purpose. So they're all universal. So what we will do is we'll just roll this all up fancy like. We'll tuck it under here with a couple zip ties. Everything will look good. It'll be look neat out of the way. Not a problem. If I gain weight, we can adjust. If I get skinny, we can adjust, whatever. So anyway, guys, we now have a five point harness in the race truck. Um, we got the five point, we got the Kirky, that's all installed. We got the engine here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm antsy. I wanna get this thing on the track. So anyway, guys, oh! And that's another thing. Uh, for those of you who have stayed to the end of the video here, I'll just give you a little heads up. Um, we have ordered our air setup for the truck. So what we are doing turbocharger wise in this engine bay and on that engine is coming. Uh, I'm pretty stoked. That's, uh, yeah. Everything's starting to come together. I mean, it's... There's going to be a lot of little roadblocks. We know this. We can get through it. But, man, am I excited. And speaking of roadblocks, our one from the other night, our uh, little ABS module, I started working on that. I really didn't pull the camera out because I figured, you know, it's it's flaring, it's flaring brake lines, so it's pretty simplistic. If you really want to do this, somebody has a dedicated video to this on YouTube, I'm sure. But basically started running our proportioning valve, so that way we get rid of that big heavy block, get something we can actually adjust, not that I think we'll need it, but we have it. So anyway guys, I'm just rambling on at this point. Um, main focus is we have our safety equipment installed, we have our aluminum Kirky seat installed, we have our race quip five point harness installed, we started doing a little work on our uh, Summit Racing Proportioning Valve. That's the other thing. This is a Summit Racing Proportioning Valve. I believe, I believe it's just a rebranded Willward because they look identical and all that. So we went with the Summit Racing, saved a few dollars, but like I said, looks identical to the Willward or Will Wood, whatever it is. But yeah, anyway, Summit Racing, Jags, they both have them. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna stop the rambling. Just enjoy this view of the seat. Um, man, it felt good climbing in there. And I I will tell you right now, a buddy of mine stopped over last night. He said, man, this thing's got to be hell to get into. I threw the seat in real quick. I said, climb in there. And he said, wow. A buddy of ours had a thousand horsepower Mustang. And he said, you basically had to fall on the ground to get into it. He said, this thing's a dream in comparison. And we have a lot more bars. So that's a plus in my book. Anyway, guys, get out in your garage, get the wrench in on your truck, 